possible. I'm talking about liquid. Rich enough to have your own jet. Rich enough not to waste time. Well, in my book, you either do it right or you get eliminated. They're analysts. They don't know preferred stock from livestock, all right? The new law of evolution in corporate America seems to be survival of the unfit. Good evening, stock traders, and welcome to Stock Traders Talk Radio here on a beautiful Thursday night as we wrap up the week, February the 2nd, 2012. I'm your host, STT. Joining me on tonight's program, I have Hans. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Welcome back to the show, sir. Beautiful. Also joining us on the program tonight, we have Stark Sumo. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to the show, sir. Glad to be back. Good to have you. <laughs> also on the program with us tonight is Sifakia. Aloha, STT, and the rest of the gang. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Looking forward to another awesome interview from Top. There we go. That's coming up very soon. Also joining me on the program tonight is Haas. Hey, Mike. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. It's a wild game on tonight. Maybe you should ask Cop if he, he's going to watch it. I uh, <laughs> won't even go down that route tonight. Okay. <laughs> also joining us on the program tonight is Nickel. Hey, what's going on, Mike? How are you guys? I am fantastic, sir. How about yourself? Doing great. Glad it's the uh, end of the week, ready for the weekend. That's good to hear. Okay, last but never least, Mr. Cops joining us. Hey, gentlemen, how are you? Fantastic, sir. How about yourself? Oh, loving it. Look, your life is good. Life is good. Now, we have a couple of surprises in store for tonight's show. One, of course, is our exclusive CEO interview, which will be coming up momentarily. First surprise of the night. We've had requests, we've done our best, we've done our homework and research, and we are proud, that's right, proud to welcome a new co-host to the STT team. And she, that's correct, she goes by the name of QT Cal. QT Cal, are you with us? Hello, Mike. Hi, guys. How are you? Fantastic. So, I know it's a little tough getting on here with six, seven guys every night. Are you are you ready for this? Piece of cake, piece of cake. You guys are great. You gonna keep us under control? Of course you know the real question is, are you ready for me? <laughs> <laughs> it is such a pleasure to be with you guys. This show is amazing. I think that there's so much so much activity going on. Uh, the stuff that you guys showcase, it's just, it's great. It's good stuff. I'm really, really happy to be a part of it, and thank you guys so much. Okay, and, and it's great to have you. I mean, we all know from the boards and everything like that that your your strongest point probably that you bring to the team is your DD ability. Um, and, boy, i got to tell you, I'm the first one to say I can't wait. For the one night where you say, cop, hold on a second. <laughs> I am so looking forward to that night you don't know. You don't oh, find a cool no. DD for nothing. I guess yes. cop. <laughs> yes. And I'll have a buzzer and all kinds of bells ready to go off when that happens. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's going to be lots fun. Of I can already tell. So we're going to introduce you tonight, and you plan on joining the show Sunday, is that correct? Yes, I'm going to do my best to get over on the show as soon as possible. Okay, that is fantastic. We're looking forward to that. Anybody got anything to add to QT? I'm, I'm ready for the DD sessions. Bring it on. <laughs> you just got to get airtime. <laughs> wow, not even a welcome cop. You just go right after her and her DD skills. Hey, hey listen, listen. Do not be fooled by that lady. Okay, she is here to whoop our asses. So don't make any mistakes about it. Don't even give her any passes. It's not like she just showed up to the house and you got to give her a first beer. She knows where the fridge is and she'll get it. All right. That's All right. right, Cobb. That's right. Keeping it real. Sounds like she's 
Perfect for the show, then. Tom, are you going to even let her get any airtime? I'll work on that. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes you got to just ease into it, you know? So I'm okay. I'm okay. (laughs) All right. Well, QP, why why don't you tell the audience how much uh, lead time we gave you on this? Oh, yes. Let me tell the audience. It was, what, seven minutes and 32 seconds, to be exact? (laughs) <laughs> so, but you know what, I'm good because I work good under pressure, always have, so I'm ready. I love it, and I'm just honored to uh, be a part of this. You guys are doing a fantastic job, and I know that you have a lot of listeners and a lot of people look forward to the show. So, again, just happy to be with you guys. Well, that's it's good to have you, and uh, you're a welcome to the edition, that's for sure. Um, QT, I don't want to hold you up too long, and we do have a CEO interview to get to, so, um, again, Welcome aboard. We're happy to have you. Looking looking forward to Sunday night show. And uh, you have a good night, okay? Uh, all right, you too. You guys have a good night. Take care. See you all soon. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so we've solved that issue because I've received many emails about it. So Q2 will be joining us Sunday night. Now, let's move on with the show Why everybody's here tonight. Stock Traders Talk Radio's goal is to bring the most exclusive CEO interviews available. Tonight, we have accomplished that once again. Doing our interview is Mr. Cop. Mr. Cop, take it away, sir. Thanks, Mike. We're here with Mr. Chris Ensign, the company spokesman for SourcingLink.net, stock ticker SNET, Sierra November Echo Tango. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ensign. Hey, great to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. We know it's uh, it's always hard to uh, take time out of your busy day and do these type of things, and uh, we really, really appreciate it. How about if we get started with uh, a little brief history of SourcingLink.net? Okay. Well, yeah, and it's, it's great to be on the program uh, and excited for your new uh, guest host there, or, or long-term host. So, anyway, that's exciting. Um, yeah, so we have uh, SourcingLink.net is our company, SNET, and uh, it's our history. Top? Yes, yeah, so I'm still here. The uh, okay. you know, as far as you, I thought you were going to keep on going. My my, my, oh, my apologies there. No, that's okay. Well, how about if you describe what the company does? Okay, so the company is a holding company. That's, that's a holding company. We have a couple of uh, subsidiaries, and one of them, which I would like to speak about today, Alliance Auto Group, and it is a luxury car share system. Uh, it's it's. It's an exciting company that's seeing an opportunity, a long-term opportunity, to emerge into a market that is ever-growing and provide something that's not being uh, offered yet to the public at large. No, e- excellent. The, uh, now you said a, you, a couple of subsidiaries. Can you elaborate yeah, on the other ones? Well, right now, it's uh, AEG is who I want to focus on tonight, and that's where we got most of our news. There, there will always be more news coming out, but the uh, the big advancements recently and the, uh, the things we're most excited about will be about uh, Alliance Auto Group. So uh, it, it was, we're seeing so much taking place right now in this, in this car-sharing industry. I'm sure many of you uh, out there have heard of Zipcar before and some of the, the things they're accomplishing right now. You know, this is something they've been able to uh, implement across the nation. That's, it's really making waves. And they offer a more uh, affordable uh, approach to the, the type of cars they offer. Ours is also very affordable. However, we're giving luxury vehicles in a very convenient, simple, natural way for people to access these vehicles. So uh, with, with that in mind, I think we've got a, a company that's poised for some uh, steady and long-term growth. Excellent. How, how about your business objectives? Let's go into that or your business plan per se. Business plan? So sure. as a company, we've been around for nine years. We've set up primarily in uh, the, the Los Angeles area. Uh, the company's it, – it's kind of simple, our objective right now. It's expansion. We've already got a proven model that we've been implementing for some time now. Like I said, we've been around for about nine years. For the past four or five, we've had this car share program in play. But uh, So currently we operate a fleet of about 50 vehicles in the L.A. area, uh, providing vehicles in this way, in this manner, 
to the various industries that are prominent here in L.A., specifically the entertainment industry, the music industry, and some others that have a, a strong presence here. So what we've been able to accomplish here is a very scalable uh, model that we can do in other markets across the country, uh, to name a few, Atlanta and Houston are, are two that we've really got our eyes on. So our business model is expansion right now, and where we've already proven this model, now we can take this model to those different in, uh, markets. We are excited about what we have planned in building the recognition of this company and, and want it to be as familiar as Zipcar is currently. The, where, did, where did the idea come from, I mean, the concept itself? Well, transportation companies have been around. That's a very traditional model, and everyone's rented a car that's listening to this, and, and they've, everyone understands what it is. What we think the idea that's unique is is allowing a membership opportunity, uh, a very low-entry membership opportunity to to take, for example, Cup, if, you, if you landed in L.A. Uh, sometime in the near future and you were a member of this Alliance Auto Group and – your hotel offered two of those cars outside, and you needed to run to a quick business meeting and maybe to a show that night or, or some other uh, entertainment that evening that you could hop in one of our luxury vehicles, uh, head over to this event, and be back before you know two or three hours. You've paid for three hours now, and you didn't need the car for all 24 or, or the full trip that you were there. So the idea came out of necessity. Uh, we're seeing Zipcar and others, fulfill this need that a lot of people need right now. It is big in these metropolitan areas. So really the idea was almost a natural evolution into meeting the needs of our clients. This, your company is actually the first of, of this type that I've actually done an interview with, and I'm not very familiar with the actual market. Can you kind of elaborate on you know what your targeted audience is or, or the market itself? The target market is the business traveler. It's the industry that wants to take someone out to entertain a client uh, with a luxury vehicle in a in a nice setting that that is easily accessible. Uh, and that market's everywhere. Uh, any downtown arena throughout the country, this opportunity presents itself every day, thousands of times a day, and our ability to, to put the right type of car. You know, we have SUVs. We have uh, very impressive uh, sports cars. You know, whatever that is that you're needing at that particular time, this model allows people to give their clients, pre present that image that they want to express in a way that's very easy and accessible for them. So the market as a whole, I mean, we all know the rental industry, it's huge. It's it's, it's it's an absolute necessity to our business landscape in America. And taking it to the next level in a very affordable way, you know, it, it's part and parcel. This is a very natural fit for what's currently in our market. The uh, Level with me. Do you, do you drive the sports cars? I can't keep my hands off them. Uh, and, and the best, <laughs> our motto is, <laughs> our motto is this, and I think a lot of you can relate to this, is, is why drive just one when you can experience them all? I, my favorite thing is picking which car I'm going to drive that weekend, you know, hoping that we got serious? one available and get to enjoy whatever ride that is that day and feel them all. So, yeah, my, my new favorite car changes all the time. Wait, give us a couple of them. We got a lot of things. SUVs are, you know, we always want to have a couple Escalades, a couple of this big Suburbans, you know, something available for the tinted windows that's set up nice for what people have. You know, everyone loves a good Mercedes. We keep all the series there. Uh, we, 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 the BMWs, the, uh, we've got a couple high-end cars as well, but we, we try and keep what people want. We're listening to clients all the time and uh, trying to keep that type of, Trending, you know, Maseratis were real hot two or three years ago, and we kept those on stock. They're not as much anymore. You know, I don't know if it was the show showing what, but we try and keep what cars are coming uh, that people want. Uh, excellent. Now, I want to go back to the business plan here real quick. The um, sure. what, what, During your business plan, you talked about growth and that type of thing. I mean, where are you at? I mean, what phase are you actually in right now? You know, I'd say we're in the the, the brand awareness phase where we've been a company here in L.A. For, for a long time now, and sure, we have our client base, and we're ready to really open this up to, the, to 
gain that brand recognition nationwide. Uh, we are doing some pretty exciting things right now to get in front of uh, a range of uh, venues and uh, people to help people start to see uh, AAG or uh, Alliance Auto Group as their their source. Last weekend, for example, we were up in Park City, Utah, a part of the 2012 Sundance Film Festival. We were able to provide vehicles to a lot of the celebrities, to a top executives, and, and to be a part of that, that landscape there where so many people are rushing around and to see Alliance Auto Group there was a big thing for us and I think for our clients too. I think everyone really enjoyed the service we offered there. Well, so now that you've entered that phase, I mean, what are your short-term, your short-term objectives? Short term is to get our brand out. I mean that is so important. We're, we're not a we're not a company that just has to get established. We're already established. What's important to us right now is to build the brand recognition. We need people to see us and know who we are. Right after that, to to, to allow that to slingshot right is the expansion. So right now we're going to put some good time into establishing this brand and then open new markets as soon as possible. When you say new markets, what's that mean? Houston, Atlanta, New York, Boston. We need to establish this brand. It's got to be in the – people are thinking, I hope this city has AAG so that we can jump in that car, entertain our client, have the success we need, and be on to the next thing. We need people thinking about, oh, I'll rent the hotel that has our that has the cars there. That at this point, people know Zipcar. College kids know Zipcar. Anybody that's living in a downtown metropolitan area knows Zipcar. We need to know in the back of their minds that they're thinking, I need to be able to access that car for this need that I have. We get that brand recognition set. We align ourselves just the way we have in L.A., in Atlanta, in Dallas, in Houston, with the sports teams, with the uh, different industries at large, and we, we move quickly to expand in these different markets. The, now, are you are you already venturing down those steps? Sure, we sure are. Got to We need to launch in those areas at the right in the right way at the right time so they're successful. So we're currently building relationships there with the hotels, with the with the sports teams, with the industries unique to those different cities. Once we feel that we've got the the interest that we need and the contracts in place, that we can open those successfully and in a big way. Oh, excellent. Yeah, now from longer term, once you once you I, you know I guess the, the the growth possibilities are endless. I mean, once you start br- branching into those other cities, I would assume that then it would the following year would be more cities and more cities. Correct. I mean, is that the concept? That is the concept. The expansion plan is pretty simple: more cities. And you so know, the, the, uh, with, go ahead. There's do you see a, a limit on your potential growth then? You know, really, not, we, we don't. You know. It, it, even in LA, you're like right now we run a fleet of 50. With this brand recognition, I think we can increase that, maybe double it in in, in these larger cities. Uh, yeah, the possibilities really are the membership component of uh, the Alliance Group helps people have that, uh, immediate you know thought process to to use the car. You know, in any city that they could be in, you know that membership allows them to to have access and to any city is a possibility at this point. Of course, we'll go through the bigger markets first, but we will just keep expanding, just as we've seen any rental. You know, where there's business travel, there's a need for us. Sure. Okay. That makes that makes sense. Now, do you have any uh, strategic alliances or partnerships that you're venturing down regarding this plan? Plan. Well, I'll tell you right now. In LA, we do. We've got some pretty nice opportunities coming up. Uh, yes. Hotels are a great partnership for us. Uh, that allows us to put our vehicles at the at the fingertips for for the business traveler. Secondly, we've got some really exciting uh, partnerships and events that we will be a part of coming up soon that will really help build this brand recognition that we will, uh, you know, as we're always referring to, we, we, we try and keep our shareholders updated and try and be as transparent as possible for them with good communication about what we'll be a part of. And so, Look for things soon. Good. Would you like that to update them now? You know, uh, I would. <laughs> I would. Uh, we 
I'll just say we, we, we do have some pretty exciting things coming up soon. Well, I, I, at least I tried, right? <laughs> you know, Cop, as much as I want to let it out right now, we are so close to structuring pretty exciting things that will give national attention, that will really allow us to be seen. Hang tight. Hang tight. How, how long are you telling me to hang tight for? A couple weeks is all we need. We are close. Wow. couple weeks. Wow. Okay. All right. I won't pressure you then, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> and nor will I put a deadline on you, but your shareholders will, I can assure you that. So they'll be expecting <laughs> yes, to hear some, some great stuff coming from that. The, uh, are you planning an uplist or uh, you know moving to a higher uh, tier? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a long-term growth. We definitely want to move to those other markets, to the other tiers. We are excited. That is in our plan, in our business strategy that we talked about. That's the distance we're going. The um, you mentioned zip cars earlier. I mean, I, I guess I kind of want to go into a competition question. Is is that who your competition is, or is there somebody else that's your 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 competitive force out there? You know, right now there's not a competitive luxury industry. If anything, we are happy to 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 uh, identify with who Zipcar is and what they've accomplished. Uh, again, they're offering a very college-type setting, you know, uh, vehicle that allows uh, college kids to, to have quick access to a car. Uh, you know, we're doing what Zipcar does for the masses, for business travelers, and I think we like that niche. We're comfortable with there. We know it's more profitable. We know there's better margins, and we really think it's a great niche that right now – we stand in alone. Wow. Okay. So yeah. ooh, okay. that's a, that's a, a, that kind of puts a different spin on the whole thing. So the speed of you getting into the cities is probably pretty important then. It is. Expansion is our key. Yeah, I, I, we talk about it all the time. That's We're so excited to go into different cities. Oh, excellent. The, uh, what's the uh, financial outlook look like for the company? Well, like I said, we're not, we're not a new startup, so uh, we've been around for a long time. We've been a healthy company for a number of years. Uh, we uh, we have the ability to get the loans we need. We have the the capital and the partners to move in the directions we need to move. And right now, it's based on uh, the the uh, the contracts and the strategic partnerships in those areas. The financial looks, outlook looks great. Uh, we're confident that we can expand. We're confident that we have a company that's going to last. Now, the, do you have a company website? We do. We do. It is sourcinglinknet.com. Gotcha. Now, is that the best uh, resource for potential investors to look information up on the company? I would assume it would be. Yes, yeah, it is. Please do. Visit our website, see what we're up to, we'll look for these upcoming events. There's get, there's big news coming. Now, your, your company's been uh, um, in the buzz cloud and out there in the uh, in the investment world in a pretty big way over the course of the last few weeks. And, uh, you know, so a lot of investors are, you know, trying to figure out who you are, what you are, and those type of things. I'm sure this provides a good basis of it. But, you know, investors are, you know, I'm, probably, I'm sure you probably get a million calls all the time and, you know, are answering different pieces to it. But if you could, you know, give a five-minute elevator speech to a to a inv- current investor or a potential investor, what would it be? This is what that would be, and, and that's this is a good opportunity right here. We're a company that has been around for a long time. We're virtually unknown. Like you said, the last couple of weeks there's been a buzz, and that buzz is for good reason. We've got some exciting things taking place. The things that are going to allow us to move in and become this company that it's going to be a growth pattern for a long time is happening right now. This is the time that's changing the landscape of who we are and what niche we're feeling in the country as a whole. The the pitch I would give is we're poised for growth. We're virtually unknown at this point. You're going to see exciting things coming from us for a long time. Now's the time to get involved with us. Watch us. Keep an eye on us. You'll be happy you did. Well, Mr. Anson, I've a, I've covered a lot of information and asked you a lot of different questions. Is there any question I failed to ask you that you want to address? You know, Cop, uh, no, we're just excited. Uh, I, I can't tell your audience enough. Keep an eye on us. Big things are in the works. Cop, I appreciate it. It's, it's good to, to talk with you this evening, and I'm happy to, you know, Find us online. Reach out to us anyway. We can be contacted from uh, from our website. And uh, thank you for your time, Cop. I appreciate it. 
Hey, the, uh, no, thank you for coming on the show. I have, I do have a thought though, if you sure. don't mind. In a couple, you're, you're talking, you're talking about in a couple of weeks, uh, releasing, uh, some big stuff. You want to do it on the radio show? <laughs> I do. I do want to do it on the radio show, but cop, as much as I want to let you know, and your audience know, we are so close to announcing big news. And this isn't a teaser. Look for us on our website very soon. We have big, outstanding news that's going to make a difference. Uh, it, it's going to be exciting. All right. All right, let me rephrase my question then to, 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 so where I can at least get an advantage here. How about in two weeks or in a few weeks when, that, when you're ready to release that information, then would you like to release it on the radio show? I think you and I need to get on this show one more time. Yes. And by now then, you may about. have seen us on TV. So let's definitely get back together again. Let's update everyone in your audience again. I, I, hey, I appreciate it very, very much. The, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to this. All right. Well, well, Chris, thanks so much for being with us, and uh, you have a good evening, and, uh, look, and we'll be out there looking for you. Thanks, Scott. You too. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. That was Mr. Chris Ensign, the spokesperson for stock ticker SNET, Sierra November Echo Tango. Well, gentlemen, another good one there, Mr. Scott. Cool. The uh, oh. man, I, the, <laughs> I can. It's so you know, you know what's happening. People must be listening to the show, uh, the shows prior to, because I'm not able to catch them. I'm, I'm either I'm losing my touch on being able to get the early releases on some stuff. Well, I mean, at least it's going to come on. That's huge. Oh yeah, that's yeah. No, that, that's always big for us. That's uh, it's a good way to get the news out too because you can expand on it a little bit further, which is always nice than just a, a regular PR. You know, where that's it. You get the PR, and what you read is what you read. Um, so that was good stuff there. I mean, I looked at their website earlier, and man, they got some fantastic cars out there. And what was that one again? What was their website? Sourcinglink.net? Is that what no, it was? Sourcinglinknet.com. Yeah. Sourcinglinknet.com. Right. All right, I'll have to check that out. Um, and then on the bottom right of their homepage, you can click, and, and it takes you to uh, another page where they show you the cars and, and things of that nature, and, and there's some high-end, really nice vehicles. Oh, that's awesome. I love that stuff. Really? Oh, it would know, be perfect because I like to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be perfect. If you want to just rent a car for a night and, uh, you know, take your girl out for the night and show a really good time, you get to rent a, a Benz convertible for the night. Oh, that would be, that'd be a blast. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people like myself and like you that would enjoy that. Well, I, I, did, I did some research. Like I said, I was on their website earlier, and um, um, this is no, you know, great find by, by me. I'm just saying – that um, I was looking at their memberships, and, and their uh, available membership that I saw on the website was five hundred dollars. So I assume that, uh, and maybe we should have asked them this, but I assume that's for a year. I don't know. Um, I think it was annual membership. Is anybody looking at that right now? No. No. Mm, no All right. Not <laughs> All right. Anybody no, want to go look at that? I, I actually. Sort of I, I'm exploring the site. Okay. I mean, here's the, here's the thing with this, and this is this is a, a funny one, right? Because this is one that you know, for the audience, this is one we sought out. Okay. Um, you know, I'd like to sit there and say everybody calls us, and and there's a long hundred list of a hundred people, hundred uh, companies ready to come on the show. Uh, however, it's not that many; it's only like fifty. Uh, but this one, you like that? That was good. Yeah. The uh, but with this one, uh, there was a lot of buzz over the course of the last three weeks, and we saw a lot of people talking to us about it. And we're like, okay, let's kind of dig into it a little bit. Um, and, you know, the stock started to uh, climb. And, I, you know, the first two trading days, it kind of went up, I think it was like 10%, 15%, then 20%. So I kind of thought it got away. You know, it was like, you know, you don't jump in on the runner. Well, you know, so I ignored it. And uh, the next day it goes up another 5%. Next day it goes up another 10%. Well, they used to say, of course, it has a beautiful staircase all the way up. And it's, you know, you could tell the trend with it, you know, and it's kind of like uh, it's got a little sideways action now at the, uh, you know, 0 0.0374 area, I think is what it closed today. Right. Um, yep. But there was a couple big volume days in there to where, um, you know, I, somebody's getting this information out. You know, I'm not sure if there's some form of awareness on it or anything like that, but it definitely has some an enormous amount of buzz. Um, 
which, you know, you know the deal with that. I mean, the, the key is, is, you know, somebody knows something that, you know, two weeks from now or whatever the case may be, whatever this expansion or this huge news, and I don't want to speculate on it because uh, I don't know the company that well, but I'm going to find out. And, and uh, <laughs> one way or other, Chris, I'm going to find out, man. <laughs> I mean, well, that that will be uh, QT Cow's uh, first tasking right there. Yeah, that sounds big, good to me. Big, big, big. She's actually out in California too, so this this there's some huge advantages there. Pretend like you're renting a car or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the bottom line is you know the stock's moving in the right direction. Uh, the you know the the company and I, I did do some research on it. And, you know the, you know it was a, it was quiet for a while, and you know I guess they realized that you know. Either we start expanding to other cities or, uh, you know, we're going to lose the niche market that we have. I mean, it's really – it's pretty smart when you sit there and think about it. And they, what, what's beautiful about this, and we didn't even talk about it, you know, marketing strategies are a big deal. And first to market is always the most painful. Okay, well, that's what zip cars did. Mm-hmm. So now they copy the model of that but more tailored to a different niche – so second, the market is the one that benefits the most because they don't go through the growing pains of of entering, of you know the entry, and that, that is a very very big deal to the bottom line. And uh, it looks like I don't know who their marketing team is, but I definitely would like to uh, find out who that is and, and their approach because I mean it's endless possibilities when you start looking at this. You know, you know it could be anything: clubs, airports, sports teams, everything you'd imagine. I mean, who knows? Um, but this is going to be nice to check out. And you guys know damn well that guy's driving uh, uh, some very nice cars when they're parked. You know, you know, and he didn't say it, but you know he is. Cause oh, I yeah. Know. oh, yeah. Well, you, you're planning a trip uh, soon, aren't you? I am. Yeah. I got to actually, uh, unbeknownst to you guys, I've probably got about six trips over the course of the next two to three months. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. I'll be at airports all over the place conducting this show, so it'll be fun. Oh boy! <laughs> hey, you know how that works. You remember those days, don't you? Oh, yeah. and <laughs> that again. The uh, you know what these guys did to me one time, Hoss, right? No, I didn't. I don't know. Oh man, I the somehow I got talked into going from what San Francisco to San Diego, I think it was, right to the SHRM conference. Now it's SHRM, which is a big HR conference, and I'm talking it's the biggest one in the country for a year. Uh, and one of the companies we were DDing, um, and those of you in the audience probably uh, don't know this, we really go out and find the companies. And we find somebody that lives close to it, and we go through their trash. We do all kinds of crazy-ass stuff. But, you know, it is what we do. When they say they sent me to San Diego to go down there and check this whole thing out, and it was uh, I'm going live from there to, uh, uh, on the radio show, and just handing my phone off to every single person that was big. <laughs> How did that work out for you guys? It was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. <laughs> the living hell out of Mike, but you know, it was you know, it's one of those things. But it was a good time. Top yeah, on, like, top on location. Yeah, they did to me all the time. But uh, hey, hey, great, good company. I think there's, I, I, you know, here's what I would do with this company right now. And we're not giving investment advice or anything like that. But I'm going to tell you what I would do. I'd wait the two weeks to figure out what they're going to come out with. It's a pretty decent timeline. I thought he was going to say a month or two. You know, I don't, I don't like when anybody says soon. Soon to me is a very bad word in, in the OTC market. It's just a bad word. Uh, you know, give me timelines, and if you meet that timeline, you gain a little bit of credibility with me, and, you know, I'll listen to you more. Uh, so I got a timeline. Well, I mean, I mean there's, there's, all, there's only maybe a few actual pieces of news that they could release, right? What you think? I, you know, I, I'm look. I'm going to find out the different possibilities with that. Yeah, I would say, and this is just speculation because I have no idea. Mm-hmm. There's some type of big alliance of some form. Well, see, I'm it, thinking. I'm thinking, and again, I'm speculating just like you are. I'm thinking spokesperson myself. You think so? That's, now, what, I, that's what I'm thinking. Here's why. Here's why I think it's alliance. You want to know why? Mm-hmm. He, he he gave away one little t- telltale sign. He said more than one city at the same time. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Well, we'll then that then that means there's somebody already embedded or something, some organization that's already embedded in all those cities. 
right? Because you would penetrate. You would penetrate. Unless you had a huge marketing team and a huge employee force, you would go to one city at a time, branch out, go to the next city, branch out. You would not take on four cities at the same time. Okay. Well. Is that how you guys heard that? I think it was uh, Atlanta and Houston. Yeah, I heard New York City too. So. Yeah. Right. So. I, I, that's that's just me. There's it's there's some type of huge huge partnership, and that you know speculation, speculation. Call it what. <laughs> I don't know. Their their market is geared toward. It, it's a luxury market. It's geared toward you know entertainment and celebrity industry. I wouldn't doubt if we don't have a spokesman, uh, spokesperson announcement in the near future to some celebrity or some you know rock star alliance or something like that. Who knows? Right. Well, well, you, well, to, you know. Wait one second. Wait one second. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put. Uh, Two pieces, uh, like you say, connected dots, uh, cop. Okay, I know, and I'm going to go to our interview from from Sunday night. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you that I know that Gene Simmons uses like the same type of service for jets, you know, to fly around the country and stuff like that. Right. I'm going to say, and this is going far fetched, that they're going to align themselves with a company such as that. Well, you have a superstar on your plane get off and get into their vehicles. You think so? No, I'm just guessing. The um, well, but know, I like it. it would I like it. it, dude. I like it too. That would be awesome, well, actually. That's in the land, fun. in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, and in the OTC, the king is speculation. <laughs> well, yeah. just for those listening, I do want to, I do want to say so, something about our speculating. And, and talking about a company and things of that nature. Two years ago, we did an interview with a company, okay, that did electronic cigarettes. And we had mentioned to them that they should come up with a marijuana-flavored electronic cigarette. For those that pay attention in the OTC world, that just came out, uh, what, two weeks ago, was it? Three weeks ago? Oh, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. 401k, that was, what, two years ago? Yeah, Exactly. He goes, that that was actually pretty funny. We called the CEO up after the show, and, you know, one thing about Pat, he always came up with these just crazy outlandish ideas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you know, Mike and I would sit there and go, ah, yeah, that sounds good, but, you know. Well, so he calls, I mean, directly after the show, calls up the CEO and says, hey, I think marijuana is the way to go. <laughs> now, now, realize the night before that interview, um, it was when we had our, like a round table of pot smokers. <laughs> oh, wow. It was all those when when uh, California was going through the whole thing where they were going to legalize uh, marijuana from a, a, a medicinal standpoint. Yeah. Well, we had four companies on. What was it? CBIS. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them on the show, and they're going back and forth talking about it and all this other stuff. And it was Bob Melamede, yep. right? Is that his name? Dr. Bob. Bob Dr. Bob <laughs> Melamede. The, uh, Holy crap! Yeah, that was that was. Uh, well, needs to say they uh, they uh, took his idea, and he's got no royalty. <laughs> oh, I bet he's oh. <laughs> yeah. So another we, great idea for Mike that he doesn't get anything for. No, 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 no. This was from Pat, not me. Four hundred one. Four hundred one. Okay. Um, but yeah, no. I mean, like I said, I just wanted to point that out to the listeners that you know, even though we're speculating on, on all of this. Um, you know, some of our ideas actually do come to fruition. And they do have uh, news to look forward to in, what What do you say, a couple of weeks, right? So figure, let's say the end of the month. By the end of the month, you'll have news on this. And hopefully he releases it right here on Stock Traders Talk Radio. That would be even better. Guys, it was a very good interview. Very well done, Mr. Cop. Thanks. Thanks. I, can't wait awesome. for, I can't wait for Cutie Cow to take, take over the interviews. <laughs> I can't wait till I'm traveling to, to one of these towns where, this, where they have uh, an office. So I'm going to rent a nice car. <laughs> there you go. All right. If you missed any portion of tonight's interview, you will be able to listen to it in its entirety in video format. That's right, in video format on Investors Hub. That's correct. iHub under videos and then market commentary. You can listen to the entire show if you wish or just the interview. Entirely up to you. Now, Stock Traders Talk Radio received an email the other day from a dedicated listener. He is also a member on iHub. 
And he emailed us and said, guys, I have an intro I'd like to throw at you and see what you think. He goes by the name of Money Badger on iHub. So, Money Badger, if you're out there listening tonight, here is your debut on Stock Traders Talk Radio. trying to figure out one thing. Go ahead. On at, on all of our first nights, there was no come on for five minutes and then we'll see you tomorrow. You, uh, that's not how it went with us. But yet you get a female on and you, you said, you know, good night at, at like minute four. I don't know, man. Well, Apparently because... she had she had something to do. I guess she had a beer beckoning. Yeah, I think so. Is that she, what it had, was? She, had, she had to make a beer run. Yeah. Nice. We still have to get her radio ready. Great, God! Radio ready. Listen to me. Listen to me. You, I, I don't think you guys understand the formidable thing you're getting ready to venture off to. Okay, she, she may sound like you know all cautious and all that other stuff because it's her first time on the radio show. However, that, that will last maybe a day. You know, because she's the type that probably tonight and tomorrow she'll be back. She'll be badgering us, saying, "What are all the tickers?" What are all the tickers? What are all the tickers? And you're going to get that question about 20 times. And then by the time tomorrow rolls around at you know the next show, is she'll just rattle it off, and we're all going to be like, what? Watch. Watch what happens. Oh, I believe it. I would, like, post DV on some of the boards that we would uh, both post on, and she would private message me and be like, no, it's actually this, and I'd be, have to go correct my message. It's ridiculous. What we failed to tell her, and this is for the audience only, don't tell her, okay? is that when you come on the show, your initiation is you have to host the show the first time. Oh. <laughs> That's your initiation wow. into the show. <laughs> so yeah. for, I don't know if you want to go there, Mike. You might not get your job back. That would be awesome. <laughs> so, Chris, what you're saying is the ticker QTCAL is a buy? Yeah, oh, no doubt about it. Table pounding buy. Yeah, she rocks, no doubt about it. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll see how she makes out on her initiation night, which is Sunday night. If she gets the best buy and gets herself a, a, a Stock Traders Talk radio headset-worthy uh, setup. Otherwise, she can't come on the radio. Well, what's wrong with that little feedback? <laughs> feedback is horrible. Oh. Have you listened to the recordings? We need no feedback on our radio show. We should, kick, we should kick Nickel out just for saying that. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, can, I get a, can I get a buzzer or something at least first? I can, I can hit you with a buzzer if you need it. 
Um, let's do let's do a quick recap uh, of the week since tonight is Thursday, and I, the people that are listening, you know, it's Thursday night. It's our last night on the radio for the week. Um, so let's just take a quick look back at our CEO interviews, which we had four this week. That's correct, four CEO interviews this week alone, and one stock spotlight. Let's start back on Sunday night. Guys, does everybody remember Sunday night's interview? Yes. Okay. Yes. We interviewed Mr. Stephen Sandlis. Man, how about that? Four out of the past uh four of the past days, three out of the four has been up. This thing's been moving like a beast this week. Are are you are you taking over hosting? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there like, oh. Uh oh. Every silence. time you talk, you're going to jump over me? Is that how it's going to work? I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to step on your toes. I didn't even finish what I was saying. It wasn't even close. <laughs> you <was> excited. <laughs> Go ahead, finish out the week. I give up. <laughs> what was your mic? Uh, ICPA. ICPA. Yeah. I'd like to just say one quick thing is that, Cop, you are the man. Nobody clean a digger out there in this business is you, my friend. Thanks, buddy. Digging clean as clean can be. Love hey, it. Here's the deal. The, yeah, and, and just so everybody knows, I don't come up with all these questions. These guys are feeding me stuff all over the place. So it's not like I don't want the listeners to be thinking like this is just a cop show. This is a, I could not do that, do anything that I do without this team. And it's and that's what it takes to do what we do. A lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of hours going to do, doing these things. And a uh, uh, complete team. But I do appreciate the compliment, but it's a team compliment. Oh, thank you. Michael. Can I, get, can I get back to my week in review? I apologize, STT. I didn't mean to barge well, I just got all second. excited. It's going to happen and, on the uh, sticker I mentioned. I guarantee the, it. The, I wasn't here Sunday, so I, I really, I, you know. Uh, just stop, Sumo. Give the man a job back. Let's get this wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> just stop talking. Go ahead, Mike. Okay. So, Sunday, ICPA. I see places, Mr. Steven Sambliss. Next day, that was Monday, we did added two drinks, ATTD. That was another CEO interview. Uh, Tuesday night, we did Coho, C-O-H-O. Last night, we had a CEO interview with S-A-T-M. And, of course, tonight, our CEO interview, well, our spokesperson interview with S-N-E-T. And it was a fun-filled week, I, I must say. We had a lot of fun with those interviews. Um, Sunday night's interview, dropping big news on our radio show. Never even PR'd it. Just told it on the radio show. So you can go listen to Sunday's show if you want to catch up on what's going to happen tomorrow with ICPA. Because it is tomorrow, guys. The big meeting that he announced that he has with Mr. Gene Simmons and crew. So... With that said, let's go around the horn real quick with a little stocks in focus to wrap up the show and wrap up the week here at Stock Traders Talk Radio. I'm going to start with the person that likes to interrupt me the most, Stock Sumo. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just excited that that we've had such a good week. You know, it's been a great team effort, and uh, you guys do a wonderful job uh, looking back at some of these plays. Even the weeks prior to leading up to this week, it's just been phenomenal. Um, you know, I'm just looking forward to the weeks ahead and uh, looking forward to having a fun night Sunday night. Okay, and that's uh, – what stock ticker was that? <laughs> <laughs> you got to love it. That's, you got to love it. T-G-I-T? T-G-I-T. Nice. Uh, Stock sumo people. <laughs> All right. Not without a stock in focus. That's a rarity. That's for sure. Ah, you know, I'd rather I, I you know, I talk enough about stock and focus. Uh, 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 I'll leave it to you guys this Okay. Week. All right. Let's move over to a man that does not get a lot of airtime. Hans, tell us what you're looking at this week, sir. Hey Mike. Uh I'm gonna have to go with JBII. They like to put out news on Fridays, so I think that's a buy for tomorrow, maybe. Um 
We haven't heard anything in a long time. Uh, I know they've been working on stuff. They just completed a building, so that's my plug for the night. Okay. JBII, that was the stock spotlight back at what, 62 cents, was it? Yeah. And, yeah, that was right after the big drop, and it's and, recovered pretty good since then. And, yeah, and the next it, day it ended up dipping down to like 38 and then took off like a bat out of hell. I knew it was too good to be true, guys. I knew it was too good. <laughs> guys, you take over. I'm just going to be quiet the rest of the show. Not two minutes later. Boom. Here he is. Unreal. <laughs> okay. Uh, Han, uh, refresh my memory. Where is that trading at today? Uh, that's right around a dollar thirty. Dollar thirty. I think that it's 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 been channeling really tight. It's 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 really crazy. Um, I think it closed at a dollar twenty-five or something like that today. Okay, and then refresh my memory a little bit more. The day after the stock spotlight, what did we uh, what did we see as a high for JBII? Do you remember? Oh, um, let's see, when was that? It was one forty-two. Yeah, I was just going to say it was 142. 142. Yeah, it, 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 oh, sorry, Mike, I got to watch it. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. It, uh, it was uh, 77, and they, actually, that's the night that uh, Sissy called it. He said, they had opened there at 77, he said, watch it dip to 50, and then buy on the uptrend, and it just blew out the water, went to a dollar 42, and Sissy called it. Opened at 77, dropped down to 52, ran up to a dollar 42. And still yeah, holding that dollar thirty range. Very yeah, that's all. That was all luck, though, because the the night before that's when we had that ATRN that we called at point zero zero eight eight. Point zero zero eight eight. So it's just luck. Is that? Is it's that just all. Thing? I mean, yeah, all the, it's, it's all luck. It's all, all this yeah, it actually luck. closed at a dollar twenty nine today, and the last two days it's closed at exactly one thirty. So it's it's really tight, tight channel. Eight. You want me to give you the sec- the one next one after uh, JBII? What was that? GDSM at point zero zero one. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a beast. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah it has. All right. Oh, sick. Let's let's move over to Haas and see what Haas got on tap for the rest of the week here. Uh well, uh, other than my usuals, I got a new one. Not a new one tonight. I mentioned it a few weeks back. Ticker TX. MC Tyrex Corporation. Uh, it had a huge spike in volume and share price by uh, late 2011, which got my attention because I had been watching it in the trip zeros for a very, very, very long time. Uh, and recently, just today again, uh, the chart's been heading in an uptrend and it just busted out today in a big way with big volume of 47.5%, um, 34 million volume trading at 0.0059 finish. Uh, basically, they have a cryogenic tire recycling process, um, and it's kind of state-of-the-art technology. Uh, so I assume that we're going to get some type of, you know, deal or alliance or partnership in the near future, big announcement uh, to give credit to this recent increase in share price and the big volume coming into it right now. All right. Okay. Let's move over to Nickel. Nickel, what do you got on tap? Uh, tonight, you know, uh, watching uh, EVPH, everybody's phone company. Um, watch this one when it was uh, 0.002. Um, you know, it got a spike up. Uh, most people started loading. Well, not loading, but it looked like they were accumulating in uh, 0.003. Spiked up to uh, 0.069. News came out, new CEO, uh, talking about acquisitions uh, coming up. And... Uh, you know, I'm interested to see where that's going to go. It's been uh, hovering between the uh, 0. 0.004 and uh, 0. 0.0049 uh, the last week. Uh, I expect to see something here. Volume has been about 2 to 4 million ish uh, almost every day. Uh, just waiting on some news to see where they're going with the acquisitions with the new CEO. Could be a very good drive here shortly. Okay. All right. Pacific Gear. I just want to say. Uh, don't normally pat myself on the back, but I was very bullish on ATRN, boys. <laughs> very bullish. And I'm not too bullish on pennies, but I remember that one. So enough of that. Uh, thanks for pat on the back, too, on the JBII, even though I lost on this sell. You know, these, this game, it's a little confusing, but uh, I feel like a winner. So um, 
what another great day, guys. Tomorrow, the main thing I'm going to be watching, and everybody should be watching that's in this market, even you penny traders, because it affects the money that comes into your market, believe it or not, is you got your ever so important employment situation report at 8.30 a.m. That's going to set the tone for everybody. I don't care who you are. All right, and then at ten, you also got your factory order and your ISM non-manufacturing index. So your uh, calendar is full over there. And as for uh, plays that I'm looking at, I'll just be playing that spy. Uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters was a beast. That thing, everybody's talking about the short covering. I don't know. I look at the chart. I see it going much higher. But I'll be watching it because it had one heck of a run. There's got to be a little premium coming out of those calls. I mean, check them. Anyways, that's what I'm looking at, and I just wanted to say, I want to know what STT is looking at. Nobody ever gets his calls, and this guy is a beast. So, STT, what are you looking at? Okay. About it starts with an A. STT only puts his plays in the STT chat room. You know that. <laughs> so, if you want my plays, you got to be in the STT chat room. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to say that. You know, you, know, you know what's funny about that? What's he didn't want to get interrupted. You're not even in the STT chat room right now. I'm You're not, always but, there. Because You're I'm always hosting, there. But I'm hosting the show right now. I can't. I, I don't take the chance to host the show and be in our chat room. Okay, I see. So <clears throat> I leave everything, and I just have our, our host up and, and our other host up, and, and that's it. And basically, I don't really touch anything. I just move my mouse around every once in a while so I don't get disconnected from anybody. All right, we'll forgive you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, last but not least, Cop, what do you got? The um, I think uh, there's a couple of them. Ants is going to be uh, uh, pretty hot tomorrow. I think that's a, a good place to actually uh, be. So I would uh, definitely put some focus on that. If you look at some of the players that are actually playing that, uh, there can be some uh, some big power going on there uh, from from what I what I'm seeing there. And the other one that I have that I'm looking at is Spa. Right, I know we've we've actually talked about that one in the past. Mm -hmm. You get have you guys actually looked at it? Not lately. Not lately. Okay, well, not since the night you mentioned it. The uh, well, spas, you know, kind of it dropped down and it's been rallying in between it right at the the point two uh, point zero two three area. So it was only down six percent, but the volume is still screaming on that thing, which tells me it's forming the new base and it's going to start the staircase up. And if you guys also remember SGLN that we actually had not too long ago, uh, looks like it's coming back down to a nice range to load. And uh, I'm going to clip them. Okay. Fantastic. Now, I have a little surprise for the audience. <clears throat> I know I said that too, but I have three. Sunday night show. If we do not book a CEO interview, I am going to allow anybody who wants to call in to call in and speak to either one of the hosts, or all of them, or two of them, or four of them, or seven of them. I thought there was only two hosts. Well, uh, whatever. You know. did, did you discuss this with us? Absolutely not. We don't, we don't have to show. Say. My show, I do what I want. So, oh, the phone number to call this, the phone number to call in is three four seven two one five seven one eight one. Now we are more than open to listening to, uh, you know, comments about the show. You know what you think we can improve on, what what you like, what you don't like. Um, or bash the shit out of or, it. Yeah, or just come on and say you guys suck and I'm never listening again. <laughs> I got, Don't I matter. Got, I got stuff out there, man. I got to hide stuff. Come what on. You, what are you I, talking about? I, personally, I, feel, so, I feel so vulnerable right now. I, uh, I personally extend an invitation to every single basher that I've ever engaged and went to the center of the mat, nodded my head, and whooped your ass. So come on the show. <laughs> there you go. Again. <laughs> I will post the phone number, even though it's clearly posted here. I will post the phone number Sunday on how to call in. I will allow for any topic you would like. Um, we, I feel that my team can handle any question, whether it's a subpenny, a penny, a big board, an option, forex. Throw it at us. I challenge you to stump my panel. Again, that's Sunday night show. If 
We don't put the C on it. Guys, it's been a great week. It's been a pleasure working with you all this week. Uh, Stock Sumo, you included. <laughs> Always a pleasure, man. Hey, what, what did Basher stand for again, Mike? What was that? Basher? Oh, uh, no, I don't want to go there. Not tonight. <laughs> Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed our interview tonight. I thought it was very informative. You got you got news coming, so you know that much. Found out some information about the company maybe you didn't know. I know uh, I did, which is always nice. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, next week and see what we're going to have on tap for you. Um, oh, I do also want to say <clears throat> that in the future, we will no longer post any upcoming tickers that we are going to be doing you will be able to find out what that show that night will be by going to our iHub that's correct investors hub board which is stock traders talk radio we will post there at 1600 hours for those non-military people that's 4 p.m. and we will tell you what's going to be on the show that night is that correct guys Sure. Whee. Sound about right? Well, you apparently don't talk to us about, you know, people coming on the show Sunday night, so whatever you say goes. Yeah. Yeah, because he's the boss. He already he's, the, he's the boss. Yeah, you, I, you're going to say that. Right. So it's my mm-hmm. show. It's your show? I'll make up what comes up next. You're doing a great job, Mike. Just keep it up, buddy. <laughs> when you want to host, and you want to host tonight, and then you hey, can have a hey. show, you can call whatever you want. It's Anything you say goes. Anything I, you say goes. I hope the first caller comes to talk to you, Mike, and just tears it to you for that one. That's fine. I'm I'm all good with that. Because I don't say anything on the radio except uh, who's next and uh, hello and goodbye. Can I ask a question? (laughs) No. (laughs) As soon as we hang up, are you going to spank Sumo? Because if you are, just do it on the <laughs> air. I think that would be so cool. <laughs> oh, like, man. come on. That's you know, just go it. at it and all that other stuff and get it out of the system. The know the fool that I made of myself by interrupting Mike, I mean. Three times. <laughs> sumo, sumo, sumo. I, was, I drank a Red Bull before, before the show. I'm going to blame it on that, okay? I got a little excited and uh, I got out of line. Uh, and I found myself questioning what it, what was I thinking. The best no. part was when you interrupted him the third time with a with with an apology of your interruption. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus, what are you doing? That was awesome. Well, it's classic stuff here tonight on STT Radio. We are over our hour limit, by the way. Just so everybody knows. Okay. Of course, because I set up the show for ninety minutes tonight. Good stuff. Because I'm I'm special like that, and I make I make special occasions. So we have still got another 27 minutes to go. But I don't have that kind of time left. I got to get a video put together of the interview and get it up on iHub. So don't forget Sunday night show open mic. I'm gonna that's what I'm calling it open mic. Okay. Um, Sunday 8 p.m. Eastern we all get together. Well, you know what? Forget this Sunday. It's Super Bowl Sunday. We'll still have the show, but we're not doing poker. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Stock Traders Talk Radio. From all of us here at Stock Talk Radio. Jesus Christ, it's getting late. Let's try it again. From all of us here at Stock Traders Talk Radio, to all of you out there wishing you the best in all your trades. May everything in your portfolio be green. This is Stock Traders Talk Radio, and we are out. Aloha, and welcome aboard, cutie cow. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio. All views and topics talked about on Stock Traders Talk Radio is solely for entertainment purposes. We are not professional financial advisors and always recommend you seek the advice of a professional financial advisor. Never invest in any stock featured on our show unless you can afford to lose your entire investment. The information contained on our show is based on sources which we believe to be reliable, but is not guaranteed by us as being accurate. 
and might not be a complete statement or summary of the available data. Stock Traders Talk Radio advises that the investments in companies profiled are commonly considered to be high risk and use of the information provided is at the investor's sole risk. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio.